Welcome to the Word Room. I'm so glad you're here to walk with me into the land of Israel where we are going to look at the Valley of Megiddo, where Armageddon takes place. We are going to look at the location from two different places, from Mount Carmel, where Elijah had the showdown with the prophets of Baal, overlooking the Valley of Megiddo, and then we're going to actually look at Tel Megiddo, the ancient fortified city in which the Battle of Armageddon centers. You don't want to miss this. Let's go. Our first stop today is Mount Carmel. You can see here based on these signs, this is actually now a area that is controlled by the Catholic Church. There is a monastery there and they control the entrance into the area of Mount Carmel where Elijah had his showdown with the prophets of Baal. Mount Carmel is unique because it overlooks the Valley of Jezreel, which is the Valley of Armageddon. We'll talk about more about that in a moment. Carmel comes from two words, Karem and El, meaning vineyard of God. Archaeologists have actually discovered ancient wine and oil presses at various locations on Mount Carmel. It was a beautiful lush garden and therefore that's how I got the name Mount Carmel. Due to the lush vegetation, um, as well as the many caves that are on the side of the mountain, this actually became a hangout of criminals where they would run and hide out to avoid prosecution. You can see this in Amos 9.3. It talks about it becoming a place for criminals. In ancient Canaanite culture, high places were frequently considered to be sacred. Speaking of which, before we move any further, you can see in the video, this is a statue of Elijah that is on the screen. This statue is memorializing Elijah and what happened here in the book of First Kings. We'll look at that in a moment. But they would set up high places, which um, actually an Egyptian pharaoh listed a holy headland among the Canaanite territories. And most scholars agree that this was Carmel. So it became a place of pagan worship. The Israelites actually erected an altar here to Yahweh. But in the time of the divided kingdom under King Ahab and Jezebel, that altar had actually been left in ruins. It was destroyed. There were altars to Baal or Baal on Carmel in the time of Ahab and Ahab and the nation had actually begun to worship the false gods, including Baal. So they worship and serve these false gods. In 1 Kings 18, we see the big showdown between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Elijah being raised up as a prophet of God challenged Ahab to gather all the prophets of Baal or Baal on Mount Carmel and to once and for all confirm who God really is. So on this mountain that we're looking at, overlooking this valley of Jezreel that you can see in the video, on this mountain, they set up two altars, one to Baal, one to Yahweh. And they said, pray, Elijah said, pray, and the God that answers by fire will be the God that is God who we should serve. So they both set up an altar, they pray and ask for their gods to send fire, but the prophets of Baal prayed, worship. They even cut themselves. Nothing happened. But Elijah prayed and Yahweh sent fire from heaven. And then Elijah had all the prophets of Baal or Baal killed. He then ran down the mountain, the whole mountainside here that you can see in this video. He ran down that mountain under the power of God. Um, as I said, it overlooks the Jezreel Valley, which you can see, which is going to be the place the Battle of Armageddon is fought, which is a major battle. But it's also the history um, of this place has been battles throughout history. According to the Bible in Judges 4, you can see Deborah and Barak fought against the Canaanites here. Gideon fought against the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east in Judges 6 here. You can also see that this is where King Saul was defeated by the Philistines. It's where Josiah was defeated by the Egyptians. And ultimately, this will be the place where the Battle of Armageddon will be fought. More blood has been spilled here through the generations than almost any other place in the world. <laughs> So our next location is Tel Megiddo. And what is exactly is a tell? Well, a tell is an archeological term for a mound or hill that exists due to man-made cities being built on top of one another. 
What would end up happening is that the first city would be destroyed, either through natural destruction or war, and before it erodes completely, another city would be built on top of it, and this would continue for thousands of years, sometimes with 25 to 30 layers of cities, and then when it finally is abandoned, it leaves a man-made mound or hill that you can see, and if you dig down into, you'll find all the layers of these ancient cities. So that's what Tel Megiddo is. Megiddo is a tell. It's a place where over centuries, cities, fortified cities have been built upon one another. Some of these pottery and things that you are seeing in this video are things that were found in Tel Megiddo as they dug through those layers. This is actually on the screen, a layout of what it would have looked like when ancient cities were built. And this is a rock that was located with an inscription from First Kings on the rock itself um, in hieroglyphics. So that's that rock. Now, this is Tel Megiddo, and you can see that little walkway. This is from that little diagram. This is the walkway that would lead up into the city or into the Tel. And you'll see us walking up in it in just a moment. So Armageddon, the word Armageddon, is Har Megiddo or Har Megiddo, which means the hill of Megiddo. Over time, that was translated from Har Megiddo to Armageddon. Um, but this is that place. This is the place where overlooking the Valley of Jezreel or down in the Valley of Jezreel, where this battle will begin or take place. Megiddo has been a site of many battles throughout history. It guarded the western branch of a narrow pass of the most important trade route of the ancient world, linking Egypt with Mesopotamia and Asia Minor. It was a major trade route, trade route and whoever controlled this hill, whoever controlled this city, would actually control the land. Now, this would be the city gates of what you're seeing on the screen right now. And this would have been built up. There would have been city gates here. And these little rooms, you'll see like little rooms in just a moment at the gates. These little rooms would be where they would do business at the city gates. We see in scripture all the time it talks about business being done or meetings being done or things happening at the city gates. Well, it would happen in these little rooms that you'll get a better shot of in just a moment. Megiddo is actually first mentioned in Joshua 12, 21. And in Joshua 12, 21, as one of the cities of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites whose kings were defeated by Joshua. So Joshua took the area of Megiddo. Megiddo was in the territory of Manasseh. Uh, you can see that in Joshua 17 and 1 Chronicles 7. And although they were not able to completely drive out the residents, uh, the members of the tribe of Manasseh were eventually able to subjugate them. Again, you can see that in Judges chapter 1. Megiddo is also mentioned in conjunction with the battle of Sisera and Barak, with Deborah the judge in Judges 5, Megiddo later included in the territory of Baana, son of Ahilud, um, one of Solomon's 12 district governors. You see that in 1 Kings 4. Megiddo was actually one of the cities that was rebuilt and fortified by Solomon. You can see here in the screen, this is an ancient pagan altar from a pagan uh, temple that had been built on Megiddo. Um, but you can also see, I said Solomon took over and fortified this city. Well, you can actually see remnants of a stable uh, that Solomon had actually built. You can see these, you'll see them large, they look like large marble rocks that are standing straight up on the ends that actually became uh, a stable that was built as a stable for Solomon. That is remains that are left over here. Azariah, king of Judah, was actually wounded in battle against Jehu, who was attempting to overthrow Joram, the king of the northern kingdom of Israel. Ahaziah fled to Megiddo, where he died of his wounds. So this is actually a very common place that you read about in scripture, not just in the New Testament under the Battle of Armageddon. King Josiah of Judah, contrary to God's will, fought against Pharaoh at Megiddo and was ki killed there. There was a lot of 
bloodshed in this area throughout history and a lot of it in the Bible. But ultimately, the major battle that we are going to see at Megiddo comes at the end of the age. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. But this picture you're seeing, this is a silo that was built by um, at the time of Ahab and Omri. Don't know who it was built by, but it was at the time of Ahab and Omri. And it was used to store grain, probably goes much deeper than this. This is just where they stopped digging, but you can see it's pretty deep. Um, so they would store grain up here in Megiddo. So Battle of Armageddon around this hill and around this valley, it comes from the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter six, we see a passage about the Battle of Armageddon. So it starts in verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. That, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They're the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather the kings of the earth to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So it talks about that and it says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place in the Hebrew tongue called Armageddon or Har Megiddo, Hill of Megiddo, which is what you're seeing on the screen. We then see the actual battle take place. And you see in this big open field here, you see the battle take place in Revelation 19. And it says in Revelation 19, when it talks about Jesus coming back and it says, and the armies of, this is verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed with him upon horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war. We saw this in Revelation 16, right? That kings of the earth came and gathered to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And then it says the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him which he had deceived them and he that he received the mark of the beast and then that worshiped his image, they were cast alive into the burning fire with brimstone. So it goes on to describe that war. And so this is a great battle, a great war that is going to break out in the area of Armageddon. This has been the site of many wars throughout history. It'll be the site of the final war where Jesus returns. You can see these are the stables on the video. This is the rocks that set up the stable for the horses of Solomon. Now this was a, even though it was a city, it was a more of a military base city. It's where they would store their chariots and horses. And it's where it throughout history, this was used kind of as a base for the military because you can see in all directions. And it was to cut off the, those who would come up from Egypt and from other areas. So you can see these are just various ruins in this area. The main thing to remember is that though this is an ancient city. It never says that the city of Armageddon was going to be rebuilt. It simply says that they will be gathered here in this area for the great war to go after Jesus. But ancient cities were also built around water and there is no like normal water source uh, just out in the open here, but there is water underground here. And this is a diagram of the water system. They would actually build a shaft down into the water uh, to a underground water tunnel where there was water. And so they built this shaft. This is a big hill going down into the shaft. You're going to see us walking down here in just a moment into where the water source was in the video. This is the ancient stairs to the water tunnel. Uh, this is where they would bring water up and down. So this is the long trek down into the underground tunnel or where the water was. So we would just continue to walk down. As you can see, we get past the daylight and we are now moving underground and we keep going. And eventually you'll see here in just a moment, we get to a tunnel that was built in ancient times. What was cool about these rocks is that on the, in this tunnel, you could see on these rocks, the chisel marks from thousands of years ago, the actual chisel marks where they chiseled through this tunnel. 
Now the spring, when we were there, uh, there was no water flowing into the spring. <coughs> so it could be that the water has dried up or could just be the season we were in, there was no water flowing. So the key takeaway um, with this is that this battle is real, that Jesus is going to gather his armies against the armies of Antichrist and the nations. And there will be one final battle in which Jesus defeats the enemy and sets up his kingdom. And then finally, this is a picture of a manger. This is what a manger would have looked like. It was found at Megiddo, but it's the type of manger Jesus would have been laid in. Hope you enjoyed this. Until next time.